Welcome to Electra Online. Here we have another very interesting problem for which we're going to need the techniques of the torque and the sum of the force in the x direction and the sum of the force in the y direction. Of course, all of those must add up to zero because we have a static situation here. We have a beam of a particular length. They don't tell us what the length is. Uh, it has a mass of 250 kilograms and it's being held on one end by a string attached to the ceiling and on the other end it's touching the floor. And let's assume that the friction between the floor and the beam is equal to zero. Probably it's never actually equal to zero, but it's close enough so we don't have to worry about it. Let's say it's a slippery, slippery floor, a smooth surface on the beam, so that the reactionary force from the floor to the beam has to be perpendicular to the floor because there's no friction force there. Assuming that the beam is held up at an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal, and let's say that the angle between the cable here that holds up the beam and the beam, the direction of the beam here, that's 160 degrees, which of course means that this angle down here must be 20 degrees. What we're trying to find here is we're trying to find the tension in the cable and we're trying to find the force here, the reactionary force of the floor, of the floor back towards the beam. That would be the normal force right there. How do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can apply the concept of the sum of the torques being equal to zero. We just have to find a good pivot point. And since we don't know anything about this force on the force on the floor here, let's pick our pivot point at the end of the beam. Now we have to recognize all the forces that cause torques about this particular pivot point. Well, one will be the tension in the cable here, which is directed in that direction. And this would be the line of action of the force of that cable. The second force would be caused by the weight of the beam. We find the halfway point, assuming that it has uh, equal dimensions, uh, that it uh, has equal density and equal dimensions. And so we can say that the center mass would be right at the halfway point. And this would then be the mg of the beam, the weight of the beam. And now we're ready to solve the problem. We're going to use the equation that the sum of all the torques add up to zero. Zero, therefore, must be equal to, well, it would be the tension, and the tension would cause a counterclockwise motion about this particular pivot point. Since the tension is pulling the beam in this direction, it would cause the beam to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, which we call positive. It would then be the tension of the beam times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force here, the line of action of the tension, the perpendicular distance from that line of action to the, to the pivot point, which is this distance right here. Let's call that d sub 1. So we write d sub 1 right here. Now we have the weight of the beam, which is causing the beam to pull, to rotate in a clockwise direction. Therefore, that's a negative torque. We get minus the weight of the beam, mg, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of this force to the pivot point that would be this distance right here. So D1, let me write D1 down here, otherwise it gets too confusing. So let's, and let me get rid of this mu equals zero. I'll put it over here, mu equals zero. This distance here, we call that D1, and this distance here, we're going to call that D2. That's the distance from the pivot point to the line of action of that force, mg. We don't have to worry about the force here because that goes right through the pivot point, so that cancels out. The distance there would be zero. We're now ready to find the tension in the string. Zero is equal to the tension times D1. Now what is D1 equal to? Notice I have now a right triangle. This must be a right angle right here. D1 is the adjacent side to this angle. We just have to figure out what this angle is. Well, since this angle here is 20 degrees, that means this angle here must be 70 degrees. And since D1 is adjacent to that angle, we can then say that D1 is equal to the hypotenuse, which is the length of the beam, times the cosine of 70 degrees. Minus, oh, I forgot something here, didn't I? I wrote, I didn't write D2. Better write D2 there, because obviously the torque is the force times the distance. So here we have mg multiply times d2, and d2 would be this distance right here. Now, how do we find that? Well, here we have another right triangle. We have, this is the hypotenuse, which is half the length of the beam, and we're looking for this adjacent side. And now this angle here, what is that angle equal to? Well, let's see here. Well, we know 
that this angle here, the angle between the beam and the horizontal floor here is 40 degrees, which is the same as this angle here. So this angle here is a 40 degree angle. And D2 is adjacent to that angle, which means that D2 must be equal to half the length of the beam times the cosine of 40 degrees. Sometimes the way the drawing is drawn, it's so small, it's so difficult to see, it sometimes helps to redraw it on the side. So let's do that. So here we have the beam. Here we have the horizontal floor. Here's the halfway point. There's the MG. And we're looking for this distance right here, which we called D2. We're knowing that this angle here is 40 degrees. And you can see there that this is L over 2. That would be half the length of the beam. That means that D2 is equal to half the length of the beam times the cosine of that angle, the cosine of 40 degrees. That's where D2 came from. And if you now look at the angle, if you look at D1 here, you have this triangle. Uh, yeah, let me make it a little bit more of an angle. Here we go. There we go. And there. That's this triangle right here. Notice that this was D1, there's a hypotenuse, the length of the beam, and this angle here, you know that this angle plus this angle must add up to 90 degrees, since that's a 20 degree angle, this must be a 70 degree angle, and therefore we can say that D1 is equal to the full hypotenuse, which is L, times the cosine of 70 degrees. So that's where D1 and D2 came from, in case it was hard to see right there in that small triangle. All right, next we can now solve for t because you can see here that the l's cancel out. This becomes one half and this becomes one. t times the cosine of 70 degrees must equal this when you move it to the other side. And of course, we flip the equation around. That gives us mg times one half times the cosine of 40 degrees. And now if we divide both sides by the cosine of 70 degrees, we can calculate the tension in the string. Mg, what was Mg equal to? Well, we have Mb equal to 250 kilograms. So I'm going to write it in, that's 250 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, times 1 half, and times the cosine of 40 degrees, divided by the cosine of 70 degrees. Now we're able to calculate it. 250 times 9.8 times 0.5 times the cosine of 40, and divide that by the cosine of 70, and I get 2,744 newtons. T is equal to 2,744 newtons. We have now found the tension in the string. The next thing we want to do is find the force here on the floor. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, we can go back over here and realize that all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. That means that the force here must counterbalance the weight here and must counterbalance the y-coordinate of this particular tension, which means we need to find the, the y-coordinate here. So here is t in the y-direction, which is equal to the hypotenuse t times the cosine of that angle, the cosine of theta, which is equal to t times, and what would that angle be equal to? Hmm, let's see here. We know that from there to there is 160 degrees, from there to there is 20 degrees. Hmm, and what would it be from there to there? What is that angle equal to? Well, we know that this angle here, and let me redraw because it's so cluttered up here, sometimes it helps to redraw everything. So here is this triangle that we're looking at. This is the beam, this is L, that's the beam right here. We're looking at this line here and realize that this here was a 20 degree angle. We know that this here is a 40 degree angle, which means that these two together plus this must add up to 90. We have 40 plus 20 is, is 60 plus 30 degrees is 90. So we know that this must be a 30 degree angle right here. This is 30 degrees. And if this is 30 degrees, then this must be 30 degrees as well because they are opposite angles. So now we know what theta is. Theta is 30 degrees, so this is t times the cosine of 
30 degrees. A quick check again. So this together is 50 degrees, this is 40, 40 plus 50 is 90, it's got to be 30. All right, now we're ready to go. We're going to use the equation. The sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. Therefore, the positive force F at the bottom minus the mg and plus the y coordinate of the force of the tension here, that would be plus t times the cosine of 30 degrees, all that must add up to zero. What we're looking for is we're looking for F, which means that F is equal to, when we bring the minus mg across, that becomes plus mg, and we bring the positive t cosine 30 across, that becomes a minus t times the cosine of 30 degrees. The weight, that would be equal to 250 kilograms times 9.8, and subtract from that the tension, which is 2,744, times the cosine of 30 degrees. 250 times 9.8, we subtract from that the quantity 2744 times the cosine of 30, and we get 73.6 newtons. 73.6 newtons. So interestingly enough, a beam that has a a weight of almost 2,500 newtons will only push down on the floor with a force of 73.6 newtons in this particular arrangement because most of the weight is borne by the cable up here and very little weight is supported actually by the floor. And that's how we do that.